And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this uh, Thursday, May 31st. I am your host for today's program, again, Paul Domain. And many of the stories we read here can also be found at our website, IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. The South Dakota Supreme Court this morning upheld a Canadian man's murder conviction and life sentence in the 1975 slaying of a fellow American Indian Movement activist, ruling that the state had jurisdiction to prosecute him. John Graham was convicted in December 2010 of being a party to the kidnapping and execution of Anime Pictou Aquash, a Mi'kmaq woman from Nova Scotia. Prosecutors said Graham and two other AIM activists, Arlo Looking Cloud and Theta Nelson Clark, killed Aquash because they suspected she was a government informant. Prosecutors have not filed charges against AIM leaders Dennis Banks, Russell Means, or Clyde Belcourt, even though they have information that leads them to believe the orders for Aquash's execution came from the top leadership of the movement in 1975. Aquash is alleged to have had information regarding Leonard Peltier shooting two FBI agents on June 26, 1975, and the murder in 1973 of black civil rights worker Perry Ray Robinson, Jr., inside Wounded Knee, South Dakota during its occupation. Robinson's body was reportedly buried at Wounded Knee Creek, according to AIM spiritual leader Leonard Crowdog. Graham from the Yukon of Canada argued that the government should not have been allowed to move his case from federal to state court after his extradition to the U.S. Graham argued that he was not an American Indian under U.S. law. That argument was upheld, and therefore the federal government had no right to prosecute him for the murder that occurred on an Indian reservation under federal jurisdiction. However, the state's highest court ruled unanimously that the state had jurisdiction to prosecute Graham and that prosecutors presented sufficient evidence to convict him. The 20th anniversary of the Sioux Ann Big Crow Boys and Girls Club in Pine Ridge, South Dakota, is coming up on June 2nd. It also marks the opening of the first club in Indian Country. Established in 1992, this club serves the Oglala Sioux community, marking the first collaboration of the public and private sectors to give hope and opportunity to a generation of young people plagued by unchecked poverty and its consequences. Today, some 200 boys and girls clubs serving 88,000 Native American youth in 24 states offer proven guidance-oriented programs to reduce gang-related violence and promote healthy lifestyles in a population where the mortality rate associated with type 2 diabetes is the greatest in the world, according to the National Institute of Health. Guest speakers include Ernie Stevens, chairman and national spokesperson for the National Indian Gaming Association, Leroy J.R. LaPlante from the South Dakota Governor's Office, publisher Tim Gallego, and the Pine Ridge BIA Director Robert Ekafi and representatives of the nonprofit sector. For more information, you can go to www.suandbigcrow.org and I'll put that URL up there for you to see. The newly expanded Coeur Casino Resort in Worley, Idaho, and its highly acclaimed golf course, Circling Raven Golf Club, will play host to the third annual Michael Roos Foundation Fish and Chip Celebrity Weekend. That's from June 7th through the 10th. The event will draw numerous past and present NFL players and raise funds for the Michael Roos Foundation, established in 2005 by the former Eastern Washington University standout and current member of the Tennessee Titans. The foundation supports children enduring emotional, physical, and mental and financial and or financial stress and distress. All proceeds from the Celebrity Weekend will benefit that foundation. The public is invited to join the send-off ceremony for the Remember the Removal Ride starting on Friday, June 1st at 10 a.m. at the Cherokee Nation, uh, Cherokee Nation Tribal Complex in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Remember the Removal Bike Ride is the fourth annual bicycle ride commemorating the forced removal of the Cherokee Nation from its homelands during the winter of 1838 and 39. The 900 mile trek is accomplished over a three week period as selected riders representing the Cherokee Nation and the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians retrace the northern route of the Trail of Tears through Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. The Cherokee Nation will sponsor a team of 16 riders and will meet up the first weekend in June with a team of seven riders representing the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians near New Echota, Georgia. From there, the combined group will take off on a journey of a lifetime averaging about 60 miles of riding per day. Sounds like a nice bike ride. 
The Serpent River First Nation Chief and Council have made application at the Divisional Branch of the Superior Court of Ontario for an application of a judicial review for the Spine Road development approval by the City of Elliott Lake in, the late, in late 2010. The levels, layers, and complex history of municipal jurisdiction must be clarified as it pertains to the unconstitutional infringement on inherent and treaty rights of First Nations in Ontario. There are far too many examples of First Nations not having a say in planning processes on lands within municipal boundaries where there are heritage and culturally significant values. We want to legally address both these issues in process and procedural steps taking on specific identified areas in the city of Elliott Lake, according to Isidore Day, the chief of the Serpent, uh, the Serpent River First Nation. Serpent River First Nation is opposing the decision by the city to allow the development of lands and chief and consular admit that the municipality does not speak for them. The city's decision to set aside lands recognized by the city as containing burial mounds was made without engaging and consulting the First Nations. And to me, this is circumventing the voice and the legal rights of our First Nations to be meaningfully engaged, according to Dave. The tribal members of the Lower Eloa Kalalam Tribe of Washington have re-elected Francis G. Charles to serve on the business committee again, reinstalling her to the tribal council uh, again since first elected in 1993. Since 2005, Francis has also been elected as tribal chair. Although Francis has served eight years in a row as tribal chair, she has also served a total of 11 years during her tenure as tribal chairwoman. The U.S. Attorney's Office in South Dakota will re-examine a list of 39 deaths that Oglala Sioux tribal officials say were insufficiently prosecuted or investigated, U.S. Attorney Brendan Johnson said uh, just a day or two ago. Johnson's statement came after the Oglala Sioux Vice President Tom Porbear and Council Judiciary Chairman James Toby Big Boy sent a list of 39 specific deaths on or near the Pine Ridge Reservation. The two men believe the cases should be reopened or reinvestigated, including some in the 1990s. However, Johnson said it would be a challenge to gain enough new information to prosecute cases that are several decades old unless new people and information come forward. In response to a similar travel request, the FBI issued a report in 2000 detailing its investigation into the deaths of 57 people during the 1970s when tensions peaked between the American Indian Movement and the U.S. government. The report didn't satisfy some members who believe many of the FBI investigations were inadequate. The newly compiled list includes names and outcomes from the 2000 report that tribal leaders say are questionable, but does not include the murder of Anime Pictouash Aquash or Perry Ray Robinson Jr., two cases that uh, re remained open and being investigated at this point. I would like to see a special team of investigators rather than the FBI come down and investigate these deaths, poor Bear told the, the Associated Press last week. While many of the cases have been closed, the FBI said any new information that comes forward could help change that. And that's going to be another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for coming back again and again and again and stay with us. Thanks.